about to experience something supernatural that you haven't experienced before and that there's no real way to prepare for. Are you ready? And now, here comes the people's choice. Not only the most popular fighter in the world, one of the most popular athletes anywhere on the planet right now. The roar accompanies the sight of Pacquiao on the television monitor. And look at the joy. Has anyone ever enjoyed his tour at the top of the sport more than this man? Pacquiao is the best show on TV. He's so prepared. He's so persuasive that he embarrasses the opposition. There's a look at the definitive Pacquiao punch. The fighting pride of the Philippines, Manny Pacquiao! I want to take you back to when you were growing up. You lived in, really, poverty when you were younger. How would you describe what you lived in when you were growing up? We didn't have our own house, we didn't have land. We don't have even food. We have to work every day to, to make money to buy food for the family. So even we're too young to, to work, but we have to work. Like sealing donuts, sealing pandesal, sealing uh, flowers, just to earn money to buy food. Hungry, sometimes we don't have food to eat one day and we just drink water. We learn how to work hard, and that's how we get strong. I want to help my, my family, I want to help my mother. And there's a boxing show in our place. We heard that there's a prize. Even you lose, there's a prize. There's a money. We decided with my friend that, okay, we put our name there so we can fight. Because even we lose, we earn money. We fight and I won. I made um, two dollars. I buy a, a rice and a food to my mom. And my mom is happy when asking, where do you get this money? I didn't tell her that, you know, it's from boxing. From that time, I don't know what is boxing. Every Sunday, we, we put on them and we keep on winning, keep on winning, keep on winning. Then somebody um, told us that, oh, there's a people are a champion in boxing. There's a popular Filipino champion in boxing. I told them, I don't know boxing. This, this is a, a worldwide uh, sport. Oh, this is a, a popular sport in boxing. When I was younger, I, I have to run away from my home because I have to earn money. I have to help my family, my mother, my, my brothers. There's a recruiter and I joined them. I decided to go uh, to Manila. I have to go there to continue my boxing career and to help my family. 21 years ago, you won your first world title as a flyweight. What do you remember about that night? And did you ever expect that you'd be fighting 147 pounders, 154 pounds? No. I never imagined that I can fight the 154 pounds against Margarito. When I started in boxing, I will tell you this. I was 16 years old. I'm applying a license for a professional boxing. They, they told me you cannot turn professional until you are 18 years old. I was 16 years old and I said, I'm 18 years old? Oh, where's your birth certificate? I will get my birth certificate in Mindanao, which is far away in the province. But my fight mom is this month, so I need to get a license. But the birth certificate will, will follow. But I have a problem with the way in before the fight. Minimum weight is 105 pounds, and then my weight is 98 pounds. I'm just thinking, okay, I will put a heavy metal in my brief for five pounds. They saw how I fight. Oh, they like me. 
You're good. Thank you, mom. Thank you. And then they forget it. They forget that my birth certificate is. I turned professional at 16. At age of 17, I become a Asian champion. And at age of uh, of 18, I become a world champion. Age of 18. That fight in in, in Thailand. I was underdog. Nobody cared for me because they think that I I I am a kind of opponent that won a fight for the champion of Thailand. You said that uh, there'll never be another Manny Pacquiao again. What were your impressions of Manny when you first saw him fight, and, and how has he really grown over the years? You never know when the next Muhammad Ali's gonna walk through your doors. So one day Manny Pacquiao walked through that door and he asked me, he's like, hey, you're good in the midst. Can we, can we do some rounds? I said, yeah, sure. So he came up and after one round, I went to my people. I said, wow, this guy can fight. And then he went to his, his manager and he said, we have a new trainer. It was the greatest day of my life. And you've never seen him fight before he showed up here, huh? I didn't even know his name. And he couldn't even speak English back then. So I had no idea who he was. I never really met anybody that had the explosion that he has on his punches, the speed, and the power. It was just amazing. We really hit it off from day one. You know, a month later, a number one contender fell out. He was the next available opponent. He fought the lid Waba for the world title, knocked him out in the fourth round, and he's been just um, a great run ever since then. I don't consider myself as a, the best boxer or the best style in boxing. But I work hard. I punish myself during training. If my fight is 12 rounds, I did every day like 20, 30 rounds or 33 rounds. Sometimes 36 rounds every day. That the Barrera fight, I threw a lot of passes from first round to 11th round. I didn't feel uh, tired. The same speed, the same the same combination, the same throwing punches. Because on that fight, I work every day 36 rounds. And the fight is 12 rounds, so it's easy. One of the greatest fighters we've ever seen. Historically great fighter. We started out boxing, he was 106 pounds, won a title at 112, went all the way up yeah. to 154. The only fighter to win eight world titles. When you go back and look at Mark Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales and Oscar Larios and De La Hoya and Hatton and Cotto, Margarita Mosley, Timothy Bradley, Mayweather, he was a champion in four different decades. Fighter of the year. Was an ultimate champion, completely respected the sport of boxing, never ran from anybody. He fought anybody, anytime, any place. He wasn't calculated about it because that's what he was. He was a fighter by nature. And I have to tell you, one of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet yeah. on the planet Earth. When people talk about Manny Pacquiao and they say stuff like, well, he's fighting, he's fighting for money. I would like y'all to know that there are people who line up in the streets of the Philippines just to come get some money from him. He's very charitable. That's why money was compromising, because he's a giver. He's a special dude. He grew up dirt poor. Mm -hmm. He fought literally to eat, to stay alive. He's seen as a great man in the Philippines to the point is running for president. I entered the politics because I want to serve honestly to help the people. I want to be an example, a good example to the, to the politician here in the Philippines, to be honest, to serve honestly to the people. Even I have millions of dollars in my hands, I still understand to have nothing, being hungry. I'm so thankful to God that I had experienced that life, you know, before I get this life. And I still feel the, the hearts of the poor people. Even if I am the richest man in the world, my heart never changed.